What is going on, world? I am the Hungarian experiment. Now, after about a year and a half of struggling to get my base growth hormone output tested, I finally have scientific, documentable results to prove how my life factors affect my muscle growth and my hormonal output. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about how I carried out my life factors the several months, the several weeks, and even the days before I did these urine growth hormone tests, or else this video would just be way too long. So if you guys are interested, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go check out the last five to 10 videos before this one, or just click on any of the videos that pop up at the top of your screen here while I lightly cover them, and it should help to fill you guys in. I tried to be as thorough and as open and honest about my life factors as possible. So if you guys go check out those videos that pop up, they should help get you guys right on track of what's going on and how I got these growth hormone results. So over April there, I decided that I would stop pushing my body to its limits and have all these little side experiments going on and that I would try to optimize the factors that I believe have the greatest positive effect on my hormonal output. And I called this the perfect month. My goal following the perfect month was to get three separate urine growth hormone samples done a week apart from each other while attempting to keep my life factors as consistent as possible and even following strict standards 24 hours prior to each test. Now, I do have to let you guys know that a week prior to the third and final test, I did tweak several variables and factors to see if there would be any type of change to the results, which you guys will see and I will cover this after. But first, let's take a look at the results. So I'm not 100% sure what PG slash GCR actually is and I will find it out for you guys when I have my next meeting with my naturopathic doctor there but the average for males is apparently 200 to 2200 PG slash GCR. It has to do something with the creatinine that's in your urine. And my results for the first test were 3,500, and the second test resulted in 3,700 PG slash GCR, putting me at about 94 percentile, and proving that my life factors must have an effect on my body, especially when comparing it to this third test where I manipulated factors. Now, the weekend before my third urine growth hormone test was the May 2-4 weekend here in Canada, and my grandparents came down for the weekend. I was eating foods that I don't normally eat like cheese and white bread. I was also drinking throughout the day and had extended eating windows. I was intermittent fasting, but it definitely wasn't strict. I was probably only about 15 to 16 hours fasted at the most on that weekend. On top of that, this was my first week at a new job, so my stress levels could have been up there. Now, I probably should have kept my standards and factors the same 24 hours prior to the test to see if that weekend had any kind of effect on my hormonal output, but to be honest, I wasn't really thinking, and because of my new job, I had to handle life situationally, and I had to do what I had to do. So here are the standards I followed 24 hours prior to the first two urine growth hormone collections. I made sure I was 20 hours fasted. I made sure I was in a caloric deficit. I also made sure that I didn't go to the gym and I did about 20 minutes of sauna. Now for the third test, I ended up going to the gym the day before. I was in a caloric surplus rather than a deficit and I had an extended eating window of about 10 to 12 hours rather than my typical four to seven hours. And here are the results. Now, would you look at that? One week after getting two separate growth hormone tests showing that I was in the top 94 percentile, I went down a full 64% and I, I am now in the lowest average. I really didn't do this on purpose. I really didn't think that manipulating these few factors would result in such a drastic change. But this is why we need to continue doing growth hormone testing on a weekly basis for a long period of time to figure out exactly which factors have the biggest positive as well as the biggest negative effect on our bodies. Personally, I believe that there was such a drastic change because of my eating window. Because I had an extended eating window the day prior to the third test, I was only about 12 to 13 hours fasted when I did the first urine sample. 
But for the first two tests, I was 20 hours fasted. And that is the thing that I believe has the biggest effect on our base hormonal output, as well as our growth hormone output, is intermittent fasting. So that's one of the factors that I really want to push to the test is intermittent fasting. What is my growth hormone output at 16 hours fasted? What is it at 18 hours fasted, 20 hours fasted, and 24 hours fasted? If there is a huge difference being 16 hours fasted compared to being 24 hours fasted, and you have an increase in about 20% of your growth hormone output, then that proves it right there. If you are out there in the world, that means that it would be better to hold off eating for another four hours. As long as you're getting in a sufficient caloric intake, you will have a higher growth hormone output, which will help you put on muscle easier and help you keep that fat off. Well, that's it for me, world. I did three growth hormone tests. You guys saw the results. And because of you guys, I was able to do these tests. Because of you guys, funding my journey and you guys uh, donating to this growth hormone journey, I was able to afford to get this growth hormone testing done. Now this growth hormone testing isn't cheap. Each one of these tests is $177 each. And if we really want to find out what is the growth hormone output while being fasted at different hours throughout the day, then in one day or within a three day range, I would have to do multiple urine analysis tests to prove this to you guys. So if you guys want to see this continue, if you want to see me as well as in the future have many human experiments documenting their different life factors while they test and get their bodies tested on a weekly basis for a long period of time, then I need your help. I need you guys to go check out the GoFundMe right here. And if you guys have the means, please donate. That is the only way we're going to be able to continue this journey. As I've explained in this video right here, I already know what my next experiment is going to be. My next experiment to try to prove that intermittent fasting works is that after my one year transformation photos, which is at the end of July, so over August, I will go back to eating six to eight small meals a day. I've been doing intermittent fasting for over five years now, and I will willingly completely change my lifestyle and go to a lifestyle that personally, I believe hinders your hormonal output and can actually lower my base hormonal output. But if this is something you guys want to see, then this is something that I'm willing to do on my body to try to prove to see if it works or not. So if you guys are interested, you guys want to see this growth hormone testing continue, then please go check out the GoFundMe at the top of your screen. And it's also in the description box below. I could really use your help. Once again, thank you to everyone who donated in the past to this because of you guys i am becoming the man i always aspired to be we are proving and showing to the world that if the public wants to see something if someone goes out on the internet and shows how passionate and how consistent and thorough they can be that the public will fund something that they want to see and we need to take scientific studies out of the hands of corporation and government and we need to put it into the public the public needs to be funding the scientific studies that they want to see. That is the only way we are going to see legitimate results. So once again, thank you guys so much. Thank you to all the guys who donated to the very first batch of growth hormone tests. Currently, we are about $150 to $200 away from getting the next batch of growth hormone tests, which will test that six to eight small meals of eating for a full month. And we will see if that that style of eating has a lower growth hormone output. There are so many things that having a high hormonal output benefits in your life. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw here, like always, please go hit that like button and please leave me a comment. I want to know what you guys think of my experiments and I want to know your guys' opinions. I am the Hungarian Experiment.